This is Melissa with Build a Better Bakery. I'm here today to talk to you about bakery business marketing 101, like basically the very first steps that you're gonna take to try to market your business to more than just your family and friends. Um, we get a lot of word of mouth in the bakery industry, and that is awesome, but sometimes it takes a little bit more reach than that uh, because you're, you know, that inner circle is only so big. So I wanna go over basically the top five things that I would suggest to do. This is the order that I would suggest that you do it in. The very first one is clear messaging. So I'm gonna have some blog posts, maybe I'll link them, um, letting you know about messaging because sometimes it's kind of hard to figure out what you wanna say about yourself and your business so that you're talking directly to your audience. Um, there's a few ways to kind of formulate your messaging and how you can do that in sort of a um, concise way. So the first thing you're gonna do though is you're gonna figure out clear messaging. If at the least, if it is what you offer and um, like your contact information and all of that, like just kind of the base stuff, you're gonna to wanna to get that together. So you need to figure out what products you're offering, things like that. I would slim it down though I wouldn't offer everything under the sun, I wouldn't be vague. I would pick like three or four product categories and stick with those, even at the beginning. Um, you're gonna get your clear messaging. And after you get your messaging, you're going to make sure that your Facebook page, because a lot of business is gonna come from Facebook, your Facebook page is set up, it is a business page. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's clean. You don't want a lot of jumble. You want Facebook photo albums labeled with your product category so that when people come to see your, your pictures of your goods, it's easy for them to find. You want your contact information and what products you offer in the about section of your page. And you just wanna make sure that it's nice to look at and clean. So you can pick a really, really good rectangular photo um, for your banner area on your Facebook page. Rectangular photos are gonna look a lot better because that's the parameter of the banner. You're also gonna wanna get like one good product picture or a picture of you baking or doing something in your business. Um, if you have a logo, this is a really good spot to put your logo. And I'm talking about the profile picture. So if you have a business logo, stick that there, don't ever change it. Um, so that people, when they see you posting, they, they recognize your logo over and over again. What I like to do is uh, change my banner. So once you get another good rectangular um, product image, put a new banner picture up, and then when people come to your page, it seems fresh and new because you're changing those images up. Um, so you just wanna make sure your Facebook is not looking scary. Um, then if you, and then your website, if you have one, if you don't, that's cool. But same with your website, you wanna make sure it's clean cut because what you're gonna do is you're gonna start pushing yourself to people who've never met you before and know nothing about you. So you wanna give them a really good impression with your messaging and your Facebook or your website, wherever you're sending them to look at your stuff. Um, another thing to mention about messaging before we move on is that if you, you're just thinking, Melissa, can you help me a little bit more with that? I'll try here. So when you're thinking about your messaging, you're thinking about who are you and what's your vibe? What do you do for your customer that is more than just providing sweets? Do you provide them peace of mind? Do you provide them awesome designs? Do you provide them homemade, you know, like grandma style baked goods that um, they wish, you know, that they wish they still had. Like you can, you can figure out what are you doing for your customer that is more than just giving them the product? Um, is it top notch customer service? How are you going to make sure they are getting that, that part of it, right? So is it through, you know, all your designs are on point. You have art, you know, you went to art school or you've got, um, you offer free delivery. So it, it helps make their events less stressful, things like that. So just kind of think about like, what am I really doing for my customers? What am I really selling them? Because if it's not a cake, what am I really selling them? It's usually convenience, comfort, um, elegance, design, that kind of stuff. So once you figure out what are you really selling, you get to, you get to decide how am I gonna offer that? What am I gonna do to you know, deliver on that part? And then you get to say a little bit more about like who your audience is. Is it on the go? you know, uh, people going to and from work? Is it kind of like the organic farm, farmer's market type? Is it busy moms? Any of those things, any of those categories, you can work that into your messaging so people know who you're talking to and who you specialize in helping.
important. Once you've got this part figured out, you are going to get some business cards made up, you're going, or just something that has your contact information on it, because that is gonna be on every single order and every single item. Even if it's just like a little label sticker with your name and contact information, that is fine. But it needs to be on every single thing you make so that when they go out into the community, people can find you easily. You don't want people trying to search for you and not know where you are. They need to be able to find you. Um, it's statistically shown that customers are lazy and it's just the way it is. So you have to give them every opportunity to basically put an order in with you. You gotta make it easy. You are then going to get on your Facebook again you're gonna join local Facebook groups and vendor groups. So these are usually, the good ones are usually location-based. So let's say you live um, in a certain town in Oklahoma, search for groups that are like that town, you know what I'm saying? Or that town um, vendor events, or that town businesses, or something like that, chamber of commerce, that kind of stuff. You wanna join those pages so that when you start advertising your clear messaging on Facebook, people are gonna see it and they're gonna realize that's a local person that I could order from. So you want the local Facebook groups and any kind of vendor groups. You're gonna start doing consistent ads, which are gonna contain your clear messaging. The consistent ads, a good, rule of, um, a good rule to kind of think about is try to do it the same every day or every few days. Um, you wanna to try to be posting realistically every day or as, as often as you can, about once a day, depending on the rules of your the groups. You're gonna to wanna to make a note about what these groups allow. Can you post every day? Can you never post? Can you post you know, on Fridays only, that kind of stuff. Make a note and then do your consistent posting. Some good times to post locally are gonna be 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. These are usually when most people are online. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to post around those times. If you're sending out emails, you're gonna to wanna to send between 7, 6 and 7 a.m. because most people um, will make more actions earlier in the day than e you know purchases earlier on than um, later in the evening. Okay, so after you've done your consistent ads, you're gonna come down to um, your next step, which is gonna be your in-person networking. So this is online networking here. This is in-person networking. You're gonna have to walk around and go to these places or message them if they're just on Facebook or whatever. But you're gonna have to physically start introducing yourself to people and work out networking and collaborations. You can talk to big corporations, big businesses, um, like banks and real estate companies love to order big orders because they give it out to their clients, they give it out to their employees, they have meetings where they want suites. These big companies need us. <laughs> they want us, they need us, they're tired of the like, you know, crappy old grocery store donuts. They don't want that anymore. They want like handmade awesome stuff. And usually it's within their large budgets to pay for it. So it works out for everybody. So you're gonna to wanna to network with these big groups. You're also gonna to talk to other, like, is there an artist guild that has a meeting and they want something? Is there, you know, look at the groups and organizations in your area um, and see what you can do with them. Even just sending them a quick email and saying, this is what I do. If you ever need anything, let me know. That gets you on their mind. You can also talk about collaborations, which like some, uh, some popular ones are photographers because they do like the one year cake smash and stuff. You can look at photographers, you can look at um, like sometimes hair salons, like to do pop-ups with baker people. I mean, really any other business honestly might wanna collaborate with you. So talk about that with them, uh, maybe cut them a deal for their, other, for their customers, maybe not. You know, maybe just have an event at the same time or whatever. Could always do collaborations. This in-person one, this in-person networking, that's gonna, it's probably gonna have a really huge effect on your business and your name in your community. Um, it's pretty much priceless. So do not, do not, um, don't skip number four. Even if it's scary, just give it a shot because it will be worth it. And then the last one down here, number five, vendor events. Now this one can be a little stressful because you have to get all your stuff ready and go. So what I would suggest is for your first few, pick ones that you actually care about and that are lower cost. If you're gonna make stuff to sell there, don't make a lot. Just your first one, you know, ask how many people are gonna be there. Make enough um, so that you could realistically sell to like maybe 20, 10 to 20% of the audience 
And if that's like a whole bunch, like if they're expecting like 10,000 people at this event, just make a couple hundred of something, you know, cupcakes or cookies and see what you can do. Cause what you don't want to do is spend a lot of extra money on vendor event, vendor events and lose it or pre-make stuff and not sell it. So yes to these, because you need to get your face in front of these people. They need to see you. They need to trust you. They need to like you. And you're going to see people at vendor events that you would literally never see anywhere else because you're going to use Facebook a lot for your advertising and not everyone is on Facebook. So even though that's going to be your go-to vendor events is your next step on getting to the rest of the community. So once you're at this event, you're going to want to make sure you have your contact information, your order forms, your schedule, all that kind of stuff, because you're probably going to have people asking you if they can order, which is great, right? It's like the whole point of being there. So even though you might not bring in a whole bunch of money at the vendor event, this one is for your future sales. This is going to help people get to know you and trust you um, when they're going to order their baked goods. So I'm hoping this is helpful for you. I know marketing is really hard because we're just trying to be creative bakers. We don't really know how to market. We're not really sure how to do it. So these five steps I think will get you started in the right direction. Um, they can be a little overwhelming, so maybe just do one a week or you know one or two every month or something to get you going. If you ever need more help, you can always find me at buildabetterbakerynow.com. I've got a lot of information on my website. You can also find me on Facebook. Uh, I've got a group and I'll link that as well. You can basically come, come ask me if you have any questions. I've got mentorship options and I've got courses to take. I've got a lot of stuff to help you get going with your bakery business. So I hope to talk to you all soon.